So I was sketching away the other night in Procreate and I thought, how cool would it be if I just could block out some of these shapes in a, a tool on the iPad without going to a pose tool or going back to ZBrush or going back to VR to just do a quick block out. Um, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could just do that in Nomad? So I jumped into Nomad and I made a little pose tool. So let's take a look at what I did and see if it's any use to you. So I just wanted to make a very, very basic, poseable, primitive shape to, to, to use for those kind of drawings that I do when I just want to set up a drawing. So I thought I'd just build a little rig using um, probably something like curves. I was thinking about the tube tool uh, and then I suddenly thought, let's just, I've just done some uh, recording for our new Nomad course. So I thought, right, I'll expand on one of those chapters. So what I did was I went to add and then just did a group. So that's my root group. Um, and I just put a sphere in and just made it very, very low poly, something like that. So that's going to be my root sphere. Just duplicate that. And then this one, I added to that a uh, repeater and then added it onto a curve like so. So if I take off perspective now and go to the front like that, I'll move that sphere to the side and that now would be my leg. This entire uh, um, assembly, I just threw that under the sphere, which means now everything is one. Um, and basically I can um, just adjust it as a whole entire um, assembly in one go. Um, and then what I thought I'd do is, before I move any further, is I would just um, move this sphere um, all the way down. So I went back to um, uh, the settings here, hit gizmo, and then you can adjust it. And I thought, right, the leg would be sort of like that sort of length. And that's the entire leg, top to bottom. And then I just literally whacked the count up. So this is like Z-spheres in a way popped a knee in in the middle and then whichever way I look at it now if you look at it from the side like that that would give me what is essentially a knee now it's bent and it's useless so if you tap it again you get a black one like that and that means I've got a poseable leg not like um, Z-spheres in ZBrush because it doesn't respond in, in, in the same dynamic way but I don't particularly need it to I just need some nice shapes so from that point I'm going to keep it completely vertically exactly the same but then if you go up here and go radius twice that means everywhere you put a point you can change the size of it so watch I'll tap it in and I can pull that one up so that would be my thigh I would leave this as the knee, which means behind the knee I'd need this bit, which is, I'm going to do like a chidded grade creature, so it's like a werewolf kind of leg is how I would describe it. So it's thigh, then this is the, the, the next bit down, which is your tibia and fibia um, down here, and make this smaller, and then this would be the foot, and it would come out like that. So we've got that nice plantigrade, um, uh, sorry, decidigrade, I've got that completely wrong, decidigrade, so it's up on its digits kind of leg there. So that worked rather well, just straight away, so I was really happy when I, when I, when I got to that point. So I thought, right, I'll just duplicate that. Um, and now what you can do in here, if you just if you just clone it from here, you'll you'll get a problem. So select the two of them and clone it from here and it repeats both of them. So I just moved that across there like that. So it's not symmetrical, but it will do for, for what I want. And I've got a couple of legs straight away. Um, if you want more of a, of a count, just increase the count like that. So, you know, make sure you go back to the red ones, which are the repeaters and just up the count. And then turn wireframe off now because we don't need it, you can see. And now you can see why this is like Z-spheres, really. It's, it's not Z-spheres, it's not as good, but it'll allow me to start independently posing this leg, posing this, uh, well, I moved it around then, posing this leg. And I've already got a stance that I quite like. Um, let's move the entire assembly up onto the floor because I've got a root, which means it's great. I can just, you know, I can just basically keep doing what I've done there and moving it around. Now, I need a body and some arms next, don't I? So then all I did was I took that sphere that we started at the start, and if I clone it from here, it'll drop it at the bottom, and that would be that one there. So that's that. And then perspective is still off. For Snap it to the front. You can lock it if you want by just holding on there, and that locks it to the front if, if you need that, which I didn't. Don't need to be that accurate for this stuff. 
and then add another curve. Bring that one to the top, whack up the count, double tap on the radius, add a body, although like the chest, this would be the abdomen, uh, maybe move that down a little bit, make that the kind of that bit there, come to the side, and let's get the creature looking a little bit more like I would want it. So maybe it's got a little tail, bit of a curvature to the spine, come out at the top. Now what, I, I, you know, obviously this is completely up to you, but I'd say keep as minimal points as possible, but I want a neck and a head, and maybe even a jaw that we can do like that. Now remember, you can have it curving or you can have it, you know, double, you know, tap it again for the black and you'll get a harsh, um, uh, uh, you know, it becomes a, a right angle. So t totally up to you whether you need that or not. Um, I don't even need that one, I don't think. Let's just see what it looks like. So, oops, done, got, got, gone away too much there. Um, leave that one, maybe don't need that one. Let's see what it looks like. Got a head coming out there. Maybe one extra one for the neck. Um, depends on the creature that I'm making really so you know um, you can just adjust the sizes and again you can just rotate it if you go gizmo you can rotate it um, but well really what I want to do is rotate it from this bottom end don't I so I want to rotate it from right, right down here at this end so I probably should have had the, the um, gizmo at the other end but now with that I need to drop that into this hierarchy here so I'm going to go add group and I'm gonna, so up now all that lower body is in one group as well. So I'm just logically thinking about how that how this th th this works. So that now gives me the legs in a body and the top group gives me the whole body. So that's worked really well. So let's do another sphere. And um, so we've got this upper body here. And what we probably want to do is just clone that sphere and that would become, oops, you can see there it stayed within the cloner, so we don't want that. So bring it out of the, 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 the cloner or the repeater as they call them in Norman. Bring that to the side, snap it to the front. Let's make an arm. So bring it down like so. Just gotta get it in the right place because this is now the shoulder. And then we would go add, same again, curve, bring it down. Add another one, increase the count, double tap on the radius, bring it down. So we want a bicep and we want uh, the forearm there. And bring that down to, oops, bring it down to a, a reasonable sort of size and a reasonable size. And then we probably want a hand, be just this, this sort of shape would do it just mess around with it, mess around with the count. This is why obviously it's good to have it um, really low poly because if you if you imagine now you could be getting crazily, uh, crazily uh, big um, with, with the poly counts if you're not careful. Um, select the two of them and clone them and that will become your other arm. And that's it really, that's given you a poseable shape. So um, turn perspective back on. Um, make sure that they're all dropped into a hierarchy so i think these this one here should go into its own group again and then in that group i would drop these things so these are the arms in that entire upper body group so group at the top pose is fine group here actually it is definitely the wrong end of that so that that is that is a slight problem that I've, that, that, that I've, uh, I've ended up with. Um, so, so I basically got the, let, let's fix it while, we, while we're working on it. So we've got, we basically got the head where the, 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 the lower end could be. So it's a bit of a mess in, in terms of the posing. So I'm just literally gonna flip it around like this. It looks a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? But um, all I need to do now is just readjust it from you know one side to another. So that would now become the, the tail end. This would become the chest end. I mean, it's a couple of seconds worth of work, so it's not a disaster. Uh, I should have spotted that or I should have rectified it when I was working on it at the start. So. Um, just turn perspective off for this bit. So I'll move the tail into place, the abdomen into place, 
the chest back into place, you'll see exactly what this, this does now. Um, scale down that neck and increase that head. So we've literally flipped that round from that one little mistake. Um, and now what it will do is, actually I'll put it all in kind of poseable line like so. And now what you'll see is that little mistake is fixed. So now I can basically move him around like that. Now those other, um, uh, basically the arms, um, the, so you've got arms here like this and move him out and then the, the body here. So we probably want to just pop these, not, not like that. That's the problem I was telling you about. That basically would give you, um, it would start the, the, re the repeaters are repeating within themselves. So we don't want that. But what we do want is we want this and this one in another group. And then this one drops into that group with it. And then this one into that. And then all you're doing is a hierarchy there. So now you've got the upper body all moving together. Absolutely fine. I can actually scale it. I can do, you know, all of the things that you'd, that you'd want to do. And, and that gave me everything I wanted then. So, for example, if I want to just put this in a, a, a bit more of a dynamic pose, we'll rotate the body forward. Just pick on the reds now, basically. Just You, you can just pose them around however you want them. Um, so bring this arm up. Um, and then, then if you want to adjust the individual splines, you just tap on gizmo and you just bring these round. So I want that arm to be up here. Again, this is where it falls down compared to Z's face, but look at it. It does give you, in, in a couple of seconds, you can adjust this kind of bendy pose quite easily. Um, do this arm. So I want to go um, back onto this arm here. Tap on gizmo. And then I want... Um, maybe just to uh, bring this back a bit and this one up a bit that's probably enough but then maybe tap gizmo again and swing it around like so and then we'll bring these legs so we'll pick the first leg and bring it back and the second leg bring it forward and then down and out like so Oops, he's gone crazy now. He's, he's literally going off, off at a crazy tangent. And there you go. That, that, that allows me to basically start working out some bonkers poses um, in, in just a few minutes. Um, you, you could switch to another program. By all means, you know, you, you know I would normally do this in the R or Z rush. But if I just want some shapes, this is, this, I'm going to try this and try and, you know, and try and, if I'm designing something and I just want to really thrash out a shape, this is something I'm gonna try a little bit more. When it's finished, if you just basically select them all, join them all together, switch over to a voxel re remesh here, and then you want to crank, crank the resolution and just do remesh. And then what it'll do, it'll calculate it and it'll convert that into one mesh. Just give it a moment. And when it's voxelized, one thing you can do, just go over to MISC, knock down the number of triangles and just decimate it to a really low level. It'll take a couple of seconds. And then that's it. You can sculpt on that. You can, you know, you can use that as your block out. You can, you know, use that as your, your initial stage um, instead of just using basic primitives. You know, you, 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 you might... Um, you know, you normally would add a load of primitives together to get this kind of thing to start sculpting on, but it's just another way of doing it. I just thought it was quite a fun way of um, experimenting with something that reminds me a little bit of um, Z-Spheres. Thanks for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of content. If you like this one, you might like some of the other content, so why not subscribe to the channel down below, and then we can let you know when we upload new content. Have a great week, everyone.